Good day. Are you perhaps upset? Are you irritated? Are you frustrated? You know, God knows about this. I'm so glad He knows about our problems. Because He says, let not your hearts be troubled. And then He gives the therapy. He says, believe in me. I eventually want you to be with me. I'm preparing another paradise for you to live in, where I will be with you personally forever. No crime, no pain, no death. So if you're upset, just wait a while. God will take it away and concentrate on the wonderful homes and love we're going to get from him. I'm doing a, a series on uh, ancient cities, personifications. I'm going to discuss Bethlehem with you. Bethlehem is going to tell his story. By the way, Bethlehem means the house of bread. The greatest loaves of bread came from this place. My name is Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Uh, if you have visited me in the past, what did you experience? You know, it's not always cognitive experiences. There's sometimes an emotional one as well. Birthplace of Jesus. This is my friend Elroy. He came with me one year to the Holy Land. I'm certain that a visit to this site touched your heart in a very unique, unique way as... God touched the heart of Elroy. God traveled through the cosmos to come and exhibit the love he has for us, God the Father. And this mighty God became a sperm, the womb of Mary. And this child was born in me, in Bethlehem. It's possible that you've been to the shepherd's fields where the angelic choir announced his birth with heavenly melodies and divine lyrics. One day we're going to look at the, the DVDs, the, the, the CDs. We're going to have a playback there and we're going to listen. You know, I'm looking forward to that day. I would like to share some of my precious memories during my long history. I can only give you a few. There are many, many. This is the first one. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrat. That is Bethlehem. I will always remember this very sad, sad funeral. You should have seen them. Jacob could hardly handle the death of his first love. He deeply loved her. He worked 14 years to get her. Now she's gone. But poor little Joseph, he was about six years old. He cried incessantly, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. Through the decades, Rachel's tomb has been renovated. You see it here. The site is not only very special for the Israelis. Visitors from all walks of life and countries come here because this is very interesting sacred history. I invite you to have another look at the story of Jacob and his family, especially what happened close to me with Rachel's death. You know, God has a way of bringing something good out of the tragedies of life. And this is what happened to, to me during a time of tremendous drought. One of my families couldn't handle this, and they left to mow up my neighbor. Now, the lady lost, first of all, her husband, and then her two sons. They were married. Three, three loved ones, husband and two sons. If you've been there, you, you can appreciate this widow's pain in a foreign land. Oh. And then one day she came back to me. Her two daughters-in-law decided to accompany her to me, to Bethlehem, the house of bread. 
Let me read you this fascinating story. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpa kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth says, This is so beautiful, the lyrics. Entreat me not to leave you. There's a song. Please listen to that song. Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people, this is not so easy. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Isn't this beautiful? She became a convert of monotheism, worshipping the one and seen creator God. And then she said, where you die, mother, I will die. And there I will be buried. And this is what happened. The Lord do so to me and more so also. If anything, if anything but death parts you and me. Isn't this some of the most sublime poetry that has found its way in melodious music? Let's see what happened when the old and the young widow entered my space. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. So she was a very popular lady, this Naomi. And the woman said, is this Naomi? Oh, we're so glad you're back. Listen to her reaction. But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. This was not the Naomi that left me before the drought during the drought and before. You know, sometimes we suffer from post-traumatic shock and then we blame God for something that he never did. She left the place with her husband and two sons and now she's coming back empty except for bitterness. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. This was a happy time in ancient Israel economy. Ruth the Moabites did not remain a widow for long. She must have been beautiful. She and a man called Boaz, mm -hmm, his name means in him is strength, decided to get, you're right, married. Let me give you the background to this very special gentleman that came and lived in my space. This is Jericho. Solomon, the father of Boaz, was one of the two spies that were sent by Joshua to spy Jericho and its surroundings. Now the guest house where they lodged was also a brothel. One stop. The owner was called Rehab. A house was part of the wall. She testified to Salmon, and this is the father of Boaz, of a faith in the God of Joshua and asked him to spare her life. After a march of seven days around Jericho, the entire wall collapsed except where she lived. Eventually she came, became part of the Israelite family. The Stones of Jericho tells a very romantic story. Romances, good romances is good. <laughs> now, Solomon uh, brought her up, taught her about their faith. 
She was already in her heart converted, but he elaborated on the doctrines of this wonderful God they serve. So Solomon married her. Can you believe it? He married Rahab, who was a prostitute. And God gave them a son. He called the son Boaz. In him is strength. Boaz left Jericho and moved to me, to Bethlehem. At the house of bread, Bethlehem, he was fed physically. But later on, he was fed <laughs> emotionally, spiritually, when he married Ruth. He was quite an elderly man before he married Ruth. It was an historic moment when Ruth gave birth to the very special little baby boy. How did Mara, the grandmother, react when she cherished that little miracle? <laughs> if you're a grandmother, you know what I'm talking about. I think she adopted her old name, Naomi. Ladies, I'm not bitter anymore. You can call me Naomi again. Look at what God gave me. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her bosom. Can you see it? Hugging the little one. And became a nurse to him. Oh, <laughs> she was mad about this little ch fellow. And the neighbor woman gave him a name. Also, the neighbor woman gave him a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse. Listen to this. The father of David. Do you think David had contact with his grandfather, with Obed? Of course. Do you have contact with your grandparents? Man, I loved my grandparents. I think I was a nuisance, but they loved me. <laughs> I shall never forget the day when the last judge, his name was Samuel, of Israel walked into my territory, into my space. Man, I was, I was proud. My curiosity was satisfied when I learned about Samuel's reason for visiting me. me. <clears throat> the first and greatest of all our kings was born on my soil. Samuel went to the home of Jesse to anoint one of his sons as the new king of Israel. I watched this. He was so impressed by the eldest son that he wanted to anoint him king. Wow, 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 S stop it. <laughs> the Lord prevented him to anoint one of the other brothers as well. He wanted to anoint every one of them. They looked so good on the outside, you know. <clears throat> this Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. Samuel saw potential kings in all the sons of Jesse, but the Lord did not. Listen to what happened next. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. Don't worry about him, Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes, and good looking, still a youngster. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and, no and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah, where he eventually died. Yeah, you know, someone did something beautiful about this happening. Maybe you've heard the song. I'm just going to read the lyrics. One by one, Jesse's son stood before the prophet. Their father knew a king would soon be found, and each one passed except the last. 
No one thought to call him. Surely he would never wear a crown. Youngster looking after the sheep. One by one problems come and dreams get shattered and sometimes it's hard to understand. But things like chance and circumstance, they don't really matter. Our father holds tomorrow in his hands. Well, it wasn't the oldest, it wasn't the strongest chosen on that day. And yet the giants fell and nations trembled when they stood in his way, David. But when others, I love the chorus, but when others see a shepherd boy, maybe this is all people see in you, God may see a king. He sees a king in you. Even though your life seemed filled with ordinary things, in just a moment, he can touch you and everything will change. What a beautiful song. Get him from the internet and listen to it. I watched this youngster as he grew older. Not everybody knew that he was to be the next king. I was not so much of a town. They called me Little Bethlehem, Ephrata. But this little fellow eventually gave me status. I still see him leaving for the battlefield one day. He was taking some food for his brothers where Goliath was challenging Israel to send a man to fight with him. Guess what little David did? Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And the man who bore the shield went before him. So this is one against two. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he was disdained. He disdained him. He was disgusted. For he was only a youth, ruddy and good looking. Why do they send a little stupid boy to fight with me? So the Philistine said to David, I am I a dog, little fellow, that you come with me with sticks? And the Philistine the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. And I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, You come with me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you, listen to this, in the name, the character, the power of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. It's not about David. It's about the God he served. And it's not about you and me. It's about God. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword or spear. For the battle is the Lord's. Do you get the message? We've also got giants in our lives. The battle is the Lord's. And he still wants to defeat them in our lives. And he will give you into our hands. Oh, I love this. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Ran to gain the victory. God wants us to run, to run to gain the victory. Then David put his hand into his bag and took out the stone, and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. 
So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a st and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. I, Bethlehem, have great respect for my son, David. He returned in all humbleness and went to the sheep and looked after the sheep. I often listened as he sang songs of which he was the composer as well composer and author of the lyrics. Listen to one of his famous songs. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you, emphasis on God, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The song has been put to music. It is so beautiful. Read it again. I've just read a portion of it. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs, runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He is looking forward to dwell in the house of the Lord. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare mansions for you. We'll meet David there. One Friday afternoon, an elderly gentleman and his young expecting wife arrived in my space. I watched them. They left Nazareth, by the way, early on Sunday morning to get here before Sabbath. So they arrived here on Friday. This is where they came from. Beautiful surroundings of Nazareth. Besides his four sons, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, he also had daughters. I got this information from one of the Gospels called Mark. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? Second-class people. So they were offended at him. People looked down onto this family. And uh, uh, so they were offended of him. By the way, your background does not matter. Home of your thought. It's where you are moving to. With his experience in child training and discipline, he was the perfect father to support his inexperienced wife, a young girl, in this important field, education. I'm embarrassed for not being able to have accommodated them for the greatest birth event in history. This was the only great birth Miraculous, unmeasurable. Eventually they got a poor quality room at a kind of squatter camp just outside my perimeters. You know, they tried every guest house, couldn't get in. Every bed and breakfast, couldn't get in. The hotels. Sorry, sir. Sorry. They, they looked at them. They realized this man wouldn't be able to pay. You may go. See if you can get another accommodation. They reached this stable, filthy place, but just in time. On that Friday night, the greatest gift by God the Father was given not only for our planet, not only for you and me, but for the cosmos.
cosmos. For human history, God became man. Huh? Do you get this? This is a mystery. The incarnation. Now they were in the same country, shepherds, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. They were Bible students, by the way, expecting the Messiah. <laughs> Listen to what happened here. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Man! They almost fell to the ground. Suddenly this glory. So, so what is this angel going to tell them? Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. They were, they were shivering. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. You and I are included in the all people. The tidings that God so loved the world that he gave us. For there is born to this day in a city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. Now don't go to any baby that's being born here tonight, the angel said. Of course, many babies were born that night. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. What is swaddling clothes? Lying in a manger. What? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> there was only one place where they could find him. What a shame. No baby shower. And suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. This is a great goodwill. The goodwill of God the Father for you and me. Do you appreciate this goodwill? He sent his son to save us, born in shame, dying in shame. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Hey, boys, we've studied this. We just heard that he is he's, he's born now. Let's go. Now, if they had gone to King David Maternity Hospital, they were expected to wear masks and uh, be tested for COVID-19. These poor fellows didn't wear the mask. <laughs> and if they expected celebrities of the Sanhedrin to be there, they would have felt uncomfortable in their company. Hey. <laughs> They would feel at home with the smell of cow manure rather than with Johnson's baby powder smelling so well. Jesus was born in the lowliest of hovels in order to let the lowest of society feel at home during their visit. Do you know what, my dear friend? The majesty of heaven, the creator of untold galaxies, became so small to meet me on my level and your level. He is so humble. He is so humble you can speak to him. You can appreciate him. He came to die for us. What a saviour. This is the message we need. The message of Jesus. The King of Kings did not come to be born in luxury or fancy dress. 
he left his glory behind and clothed himself in the beauty of humility. Humility is such a beautiful thing. He mixed with the common people. The royal baby Jesus was not dressed in expensive royal baby clothes. No, no. His poor mother wrapped him in a death cloth, which was customary to carry in those days, should you die on your journey. So she brought this cheap cloth. This was expected. So when you die, they just wrap you in that cloth and bury you. What a beautiful symbol of his death for sinners so that they could be clothed with his garments of immortality one of these days. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. The animals are supposed to eat from the manger. There was the baby in there. Can you imagine their excitement? But to them it's, it, was, it was common. They used to this. They expected the coming of the Messiah and now they got confirmation of his birth and they saw the little baby. Can you see them running down my streets <laughs> inquiring about the newborn baby? Eventually, they heard the cry of baby Messiah. I wonder what that sounded. I think it was different to all other babies. Not in the thunderous tones in which he called the cosmos into existence, into being. But in helplessness, he cried. He became dependent upon two people. Did the prophetess Anna embraced Jesus when he was dedicated. Please read her story. I was privileged to have seen him during his first 41 days here in Bethlehem. And my friend, I want to tell you, he was a different baby. He was different. He was 100% God and 100% human. What a combination. I know that Jesus will not stay longer in my Bethlehem space because of the prophecy that predicted that he would first go to Egypt and then he would come back. So I treasured every day. I watched him. But his parents were the poorest of the poor. And where uh, would they get the means to support them on their journey to Egypt? This is marvellous. Next to the, to the Euphrates River at Petor, you can pick up Petor on the stele of Shalmaneser III, where he refers to the site. Next to the Euphrates River at Petor, wise men read Billiam's prophecies of the coming Messiah. This is fascinating. While they were still studying, shining objects appeared in the night skies. They looked up. At closer investigation, they realized that this phenomenon was actually a group of shining angels. They've just come from Bethlehem. This was a sign to them that the Messiah was eventually born. Listen to this prophecy. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. I see him, says Biliam. Biliam, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Dumult. So the brow of Moab is also the sons of tumult. Who is Moab? And this is what I love about the Bible. The enemies of pain. This is Moab. Pain of rejection, sickness, death, assault would eventually be destroyed when the star of Jacob 
comes along. The devil will be destroyed. And this happened when Jesus was, was nailed to the cross. His weapon was love for sinners. The deed was done. We're going to enjoy the benefits soon at the second coming of Jesus. That very same night when angels hailed the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, they also appeared to these people from the lowest to the most celebrities of the area. And it took them 40 days to walk on a fertile crescent between the rivers Euphrates and uh, Tigris to reach my little town where Jesus was born. Of course, now he was a little boy of, maybe of 40 days. And what else is going to happen now? And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. I wonder what the floor looked like. And when they had opened their treasures, ah, those camels had a load of treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold. <laughs> Poor Joseph became a millionaire overnight, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What happened next? Will the prophecy concerning going to Egypt be fulfilled now? Yes. Did the Lord provide enough gifts for them to survive? You know, when we need to fulfill prophecy, God provides the means to partake. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring your word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy. Joseph, my Christ. I was heart sore when I saw Jesus and his parents, leaving that night, passing beyond the last horizon. But I appreciate the fact that I had the honor to enjoy him for 40 days. He gave me status. The Messiah was born in my space. What an honor. And up to this day, millions of people come to, my, to me to commemorate the birth of Jesus. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. My dear friend, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in me, a little town of Bethlehem. But he wants to be born again. He wants to be born again on a daily basis in our hearts. If we allow him right now, our bitterness, our grudges, our rejection will disappear because in his company these things cannot exist. Marvelous new joy of forgiveness and love and contentment will accompany his birth in our lives. Would you allow him to come in? There's no cost involved. Maybe he's been knocking at your door for quite a while. 
only you can open the door. Jesus wants to be born in you, in your heart, and in my heart. Let the Saviour come in. Father in heaven, this is the greatest story of all stories. The coming of Jesus to deliver us. Help us to let him be born in our hearts every single day so that the ugliness can be drive, driven out of our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.